Hello world, and welcome to another segment of Just Saying with well, Alexa Harris and Teresa Foster. You know, um, I'm sitting here now, you know, if you if you look at me, you know, um, I'm not even wearing LSU gear today, you know. And, and I'm not saying that in regards to the fact that we lost, you know, to Alabama. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm saying that because, because really, actually, I do have LSU gear. You know, I'll pull it out later or whatever, whatever. But anyway. He ain't pull up the banner today. <laughs> I think we're going to get us an Alabama Christmas <laughs> tie up there. So. I ain't paid no attention to that, but okay. But listen to this, though. <laughs> okay, we lost. They're the number one team in the country. You're supposed to win that game. You know what I mean? Yeah, we was number three, they, but they are on CBS. They've been AP all year. They're the number one team in the country. You're supposed to win. But it ain't knock us out the box because at this time we're number seven. You know what I'm saying? And there are some big games going on within that top five, top six little realm. So maybe that seven and two might get up in there. You know what I mean? All I have to say is this. Um, I'll just give me my props. I told him Joe Burrows was not ready. <laughs> it's almost like putting a 10-year-old in the middle of a high school game. He wasn't ready. It ain't taking them from LSU. He just wasn't ready, like you said. They got three, four, five, six receivers, you know, Nick Saban, didn't Nick Saban used to coach for LSU? Oh, my bad. Yeah. He got jam shit with us. Yeah. But so my thing out. is, they just weren't ready. So the, like, way, the way she's saying that they wasn't ready, I agree with that. <laughs> Thank you. But not in the same understanding that she has with it. You know what I'm saying? So my I think thing, Joe Burrow was ready. Nah, he wasn't ready. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying, but, but it wasn't for the same reason. You know what I mean? I think he wasn't ready because, first of all, he knew about the Alabama LSU rivalry. You know what I'm saying? But he didn't understand the seriousness of it. You know what I'm saying? And and at the same time, he did what he did because I honestly believe. Let me, see, let me bring it out. Let me bring it out. Man, that was like the national championship game that day. The whole world was looking at that game. You know what I mean? People who probably didn't even care about football was looking at that was game. Was looking at that game. Because they got barbecues and things going on, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And you got drink specials and all that. But it bars. wasn't a game after the second one. See, though. But, but the point is, <laughs> I don't think he was ready for that spotlight yet. He didn't realize. When you playing in the SEC and that light hits you, you better be ready. I don't when that, when I say that he wasn't ready for Alabama, he wasn't for Alabama, ready for Alabama in the regard that I think that he was ready for it the was, light. It was, I'm sorry. It, exactly, he wasn't ready for the 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 huge mass of people that was gonna be looking at your ass. So what you he did what was saying? a Willie Beeman. He threw up. But he just threw it with the ball. Yeah, he 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 threw up physically. He just threw the game up. <laughs> you know what? Even though you know excuses. I mean, you gonna co-sign it or what? You gonna co-sign it or what? All I'm saying, no, I'm not co-signing it. He was not ready. <laughs> he wasn't ready. The lights didn't have nothing to do. To me, if you're a quarterback, quarterback, no matter what field or what show you have to do, that's your passion. What are you afraid of? Do what you love. So Tag why would Lord you get scared? Tag of Lord was ready. Ooh, ready. Yeah, and they gave ready. him a spam burger right after the game. Uh, Tag of Lord was ready. Yeah, it was a good game, but you know, it's always interesting. But uh, Alabama been whooping LSU for the last eight times. And six. Oh, I'm sorry. This made, six. This made seven. Yeah, I'll just see. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> see what I'm saying. <laughs> it's been a minute since Adam Beatles. You need though. to respect that it's been a minute since Adam Beatles. It's something about sports. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> we can still get into that playoff. Oh, yeah. We no, can still no doubt. get into no that playoff. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> but, the, but I just don't think, like I said, I think it was the lights. I don't think it was Joe Bur And then another thing was <laughs> Bro set. Shout out to you, bro. Said the running back, number four. Uh -huh. When they beat Georgia, 22 was the one that carried the load. Where was he Saturday? Probably had the flu. <laughs> he was out there. They, they, 
say they ran him two, three times. I don't know, but they, I'm, I'm telling you, they was 92 for Alabama. When her, her if they'd have ran the them. same scene at Alabama that they ran at Georgia, I think they'd have took them. They was our coach, too. Hey, you got Saban, you know what I mean? Saban is like the, what they, what they call the Bill Belichick. It's the Bill Belichick of college football. Well, Bill Belichick cheats. So we ain't gonna go with that. <laughs> You know, he might be inflating balls as we speak. <laughs> deflating. Yes, deflating, deflating balls. And he got people yes. with cameras looking at the people uh, uh -huh, game tell them what they play. <laughs> so since we talking about this, let's uh, clear the elephant in the room. Let's do it. 88 has joined the Saints. Saints really don't need him, but he want to stick it to old Jerry. So we are going to welcome him on over to the Saints. So... I beg to differ on what she just said. I well, I mean, he gonna be against everything. Because you know, he still ain't learned yet that I do know something. Need, it's just a stick. We don't need, need anything. I think that that's needed. I do believe that, that who that nation actually need. Maybe it's not him individually, but a, a wide receiver like him. Dez is gonna be a huge asset to the Saints. Yeah. I'm saying that right now. He is going to be a huge asset to the Saints. Because you gotta look at it like this. Over this season, <laughs> Over this season, Michael Thomas, our leading, you know, everybody know Michael Thomas, rock star in New Orleans. He has 70 <coughs> receptions. You got Tig and Junior. You got the tight ends. You got Kamara coming out the background. Right. All those other receivers have 38 receptions total. Okay, so what you Total. Thomas ain't gonna be able to carry the load by himself all the way to the show. Okay, this is what we So he needed this, some help. This is what I so hate. He needed some let me help. tell you something. This so is we what do I hate. Need no, you don't. Dez, let me we tell you do something. Need you, Dez. You need Welcome. Let me tell you something, Dez. Welcome, Dez. You, the Saints <laughs> don't need you. You needed them because you're broke almost. So let me yeah, explain something. Twenty million dollars. Uh, Twenty million dollars that ain't gonna last because he's trying to pay off, trying to pay off some of them bills. This is what I'm saying. He's saying they need Dez for what? When Dez was with Dallas, let's not get mad at Jerry by itself. Dez helped put that. You in my quarterback here? When he throw you the ball, you don't catch it. Then when you do make a reception, you run out of bounds. You get mad because you didn't run as far as you did. If you do make a good catch, you try to do extra, you're fumbling in the end zone. So this is what I'm saying. Shut your mouth. Catch the ball. Be quiet. I beg the difference with him. Thomas ain't carrying the load. They use him when they need to 70 them. receptions. It doesn't matter. By himself, Drew Brees is 38 receptions with five it people. You had five people together. Would you be talking about this? 38? Honestly, would you be talking about this if Dez had no train with New Orleans? Honestly, would you be talking about this? Well, I'm not. <laughs> but welcome, Dez. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> but Shut not, your mouth, man. But, not, just but play. welcome, Dez. Shut but your mouth and just play. For the first time in this man's career, I've been saying it all week on in, on social media. You know what I'm saying? Oh, another excuse. This man, for the first time in his career, has a real coach and a real quarterback. You know what I'm saying? So therefore, what reason does he have to complain? He ain't gonna have to be on the sideline crying and whining and acting a fool over there on the sideline because he has a real coach and a real quarterback. You know what I'm saying? He can relax. Romo okay. was a quarterback when he and was, he was a rock star. And he was, look, he was a rock star. Romo was up. He made his number start falling when that when he that when that, up. When he that up. Shout out to the locals. He's one of our locals. But when Dak Prescott got there, that's when Dez's number start falling. My co-host is a hater. Hey, hey. <laughs> Tony Romo kept Dez up. Tony Romo got Dez branded twenty million dollar guarantee. And he got that twenty million dollars and got cut the next season. Anyway. Two years. He got well, two years. <laughs> and he was sitting on the sideline crying about the milk wasn't cold enough. Mm. He needed this. This is what I'm saying. Learn to shut up and play. Make that money. It ain't like you can go and make that money at uh Brookshire's. It ain't like you can make that money in our field. So let me tell you something. You got a passion, shut up, catch the ball. It ain't we'll throw it old. to you if you're gonna catch it. It ain't but if you're going to fumble it, we're going to send you right back this. to Dallas. We're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about this, and we got a couple other things we're going to talk about. I ain't going to challenge y'all. we come back gold. after this, yes. we're yes. just saying, with Willie Alexa Harris and Teresa Foster, we're going to talk about this. Talk yeah, about yeah, this. yeah, 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 yeah.
When it comes to trusting someone with your loved one's final resting place, Precious Memories Mortuary is here to help. Give us a call or stop by. The staff at Precious Memories Mortuary is here to assist you with all of your funeral needs. Remember, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Precious Memories Mortuary, 4015 Greenwood Road in Shreveport. Call 318-670-3162. Providing a comforting ministry for the sake of precious memories. The Noble Savage Tavern, located downtown, is Shreveport's best kept secret. We proudly feature a fine selection of single malt scotch, cigars, craft cocktails, and craft beers from around the world. Our executive chef prepares a bar menu full of local favorites, served until midnight, and features an exciting weekly menu of entrees and appetizers, including wild game, fresh fish, red meat, and white meat. Entertainment includes live music, games, and conversation. Join the Noble Savages at 417 Texas Street in downtown Shreveport and find out what you've been missing. Open Tuesday through Saturday from 5 p.m. to 2 a.m. All right, and we back, and and we 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 we, we gonna get, get straight into it, cause she yeah. won't stop talking about this Des Bryant situation, man. What you wanna say? What you wanna all say? I'm saying is we sell me one. You don't need him. That's all I'm saying. Sell me one. It is what it is. I done said what I had to say. We don't need him. You being greedy. So you gonna you just gonna wear Michael Thomas out. They pay Michael Thomas millions of dollars. This man got 70 receptions by himself, and you got five people, including a running back. Let me ask you one thing. They don't equal up to 38. If, equal up to 38. Would you be talking about this if you hadn't heard this Brian trained and signed? No, you wouldn't. You've been on Facebook every time y'all went. I've been saying, we need to find somebody. I ain't seen we that in damn somebody. post. I'm going to have y'all go back and go on Facebook, pull up his page, and see if that's on there. Anyway. No, he greeted. He can taste the Super Bowl. He can see himself hey. hanging from New Orleans Superdome right now. <laughs> I'm going to be in And New if Orleans they win, that's fine. That but all I'm saying is I'm that man is, uh, uh, he's almost like a wart. <laughs> if you shut up and play, he will be good. But he complained to us, man. A wart. Yeah, he complained to us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being for real. Just take it if but you want to back. No, but no, no, it's not true. Suck. No, he did that when Tony Romo was playing. Even when Tony Romo, Only he didn't. when Tony sucked. No, when he didn't throw him the ball, he think he's supposed to get four or five catches. If you can't get it to him, you done had your quarterback forcing fumbles, forcing interceptions because he whining. And then when they start throwing it to him, this is his favorite move. That. <laughs> that. You do it again. <laughs> <laughs> then you follow him, man. I ain't got time for that. Hey, if you doing what you do, you better come and play. A, it is another <laughs> wide receiver hey. on the same similar type of team that has no quarterback and no coach. And that's Odell Beckham Jr. He acting the same way. He's not doing that because he's a mad, wild, out of control kid. It's because so let me explain. Is that man. how you, is that how you, you handle suck. stuff as a grown up? That you you just pout. Kyrie Irving. Let me tell you, you just basketball pout? in the crowd. So that uh, so uh, uh, one of the uh, rookies couldn't get it. He scored forty eight points, and it was two seconds left on the clock. Instead of him just holding the ball and the time go out, he shot the ball. Kyrie took it personal because he was trying to make it past fifty. You know what I'm saying? And Kyrie caught the ball and threw it in the crowd. So All that man could keep that ball in a souvenir. Okay, what so Kyrie Irving got to do with this? Penny. That's so, what I mean. so what That's my what I thing mean. is, this, this is what, and this Petty. is what I don't like about our athletes, our, our, our brothers on on the field. Shut up and play. Petty. If you want to get up more money, you want to move some around. It's a way to handle things. You ain't got to act like that. You make yourself look wild and crazy. Ain't nobody calling you that. You making yourself look wild and crazy. You gonna continually beat your quarterback over the head and insult him. You already know man is having a nervous breakdown. Drew Brees. That's not what I'm saying. It I'm not saying Dad, we're not talking about Drew Brees. You brought. I'm telling y'all right no, now. No, he brought up Odell season, Beckham. Dez Bryant is gonna look like a rock star to the NFL. This man has a coach and a quarterback. For the first time in his career, that coach is crazy. And he gonna that do this. quarterback is outstanding. And this is what he's going to do. They're going to build a team. We're going to the show in, in February. 
and you watch, and you watch Dez Bryant. He's gonna look movie. like a rock star. He's gonna, be he gonna get a hundred million dollar deal <laughs> from somebody. Might be us. He gonna get a hundred million dollar deal next year because Drew Brees and Sean Payton gonna make him look like a rock star. Mark my word. Party like a rock star. Party like a rock star. Sigh. That's what I'm saying. Well, See? I mean, if you think that, you know, ain't nothing wrong with thinking that. But my thing is this too. My thing is this too. Yeah. I'm on social media, and there's a lot of cowboy fans talking to this man and hating on this man as if he betrayed them. He did not, cowboy fan. He did not betray you. Y'all do remember you cut him in April, right? He not even a member of your organization. Yeah, because in the last three years, he caught like, he caught like the nine balls in two years. He caught no, nine man. balls in two years. So, hey. The man was unemployed. The man hey, needed a job. Oh, I'm sorry. He didn't have a coach or a quarterback. That's what it is. See, she getting it. You know what I mean? But this man, <laughs> <laughs> this man was unemployed. This man didn't have a job. And if he go down there with that and, same and, stuff he had in Dallas, he's going to be he unemployed. He ain't going to do it. He don't have no reason to. I'm, tell I'm telling y'all. Okay, you say, but you, you say he didn't have a reason to, but you say it when Tommy Romo, he did the same thing. So what and, you got to say? And then I'm going to say this too. Mm -hmm. We got that news, you know, and they want to call it breaking news. You know, we heard about the situation about uh, possibly he, he tore his Achilles. Is that what they said? NFL they, Network said well, it. Well, how do you do it? I mean, ESPN said it. What was he doing? He, uh, exactly. He, he just got interviewed after practice. So, they practicing indoors. So, maybe he was on the hover around with his kids and, you know, slipped out. I don't know. I don't understand it. He practicing indoors. What could he, has, he have done to tear an Achilles in indoor slow practice? Is this his first day? Didn't you just hurt your ankle not too long ago playing basketball? And he so he just proved it. He dirty though. He, he washed I'm up. I'm 18 years he, old, nigga. He, he washed up. That's what you just proved to us. He gives oh, them bones off. No. Hey, I'm going to tell you this. Uh, this is my opinion. Like I said, when I, when I say facts, I tell you, hey, this is a fact. But this here is not a fact. It's my opinion. I don't think he hurt. I don't think he heard him. Sean Payton. If you don't see him next Sean Friday, Payton is a mad right. man. <laughs> Sean Payton is a mad man. Sean Payton will hold this guy until they get the dog on Texas Stadium. No, what is it called? AT&T. AT&T Stadium. And uh, meet them Cowboys on Twitter. I'm sorry. He got the name of the, the stadium wrong. AT&T. It's, it's uh, Jerry Jones <laughs> AT&T Behind Me Stadium. Cause y'all, I'm gonna let you me just say this. Jerry name in there. Jerry name got to be. Let me just say this to you, Cowboy fans, and I don't know how to put it to you either, because I like the Cowboys too. You won't win a Super Bowl until I, I let me just say this until somebody's eyes close and take them a deep breath. So it'll be about another. I think Jerry will be around here another ten years or. But now y'all will just show up and play, but you won't win a Super Bowl. So until he words, out of there. They're going to have the same owner, president, and general manager until he pass. Evidently. Because he, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm trying to tell you is, because he really, he think he, he's the owner, but he don't give free will. And he messes up a lot of things. You know, he holds back a lot of things. And until he get out of his own way, his team won't win another Super Bowl. Jimmy Johnson told him that way back in the day. And it's true. He gets in his own way. But stop. But stop you know him and Donald Trump. But stop, friends. But stop, stop you Cowboy fans criticizing Dez Bryant as if Dez Bryant defected on y'all or he sold y'all out. You know what I'm saying? No, you the plantation sold him out, friend. You cut him. And then the man turned down the deal with Cleveland. He turned down the deal with Baltimore. From what I saw, and ESPN said the same thing. They was... It's like he was waiting on Jerry to come back and get him. You know what I'm saying? Are you sure he and turned them down or they didn't want him? No. Cleveland still said they deal stood. They want they st it stood all the way to the Saints got him. Cleveland deal stood that they wanted him. You know what I'm saying? But he just to be up under his balls, balls. He, <laughs> he went to the bar say and, and Jay Z he concert with him. sitting in the press box, Jerry him, right? Like I mean her. You know what I'm saying? You gonna let he me come home, boss? Man, I, man, I don't want to play for no. 
I don't play for nobody else. You gonna let me come home, boss? <laughs> Come I don't want to play for <laughs> nobody else. That's what he's saying. No, I'm sorry, I don't want to play with nobody you else. You've been but, when they, but when they gave up a first round pick for Cooper, mm -hmm. there's no one's over with. So now, man, he like, man, I need a job. You know what I mean? He's but why would, I go, man, why would man. I go to a Baltimore or a Cleveland? I'm in the same predicament I am with Dallas. There's a team fighting for whatever. But if I go to a team like New Orleans, who is a Super Bowl contender, maybe I can help get him over the hump. And I believe he will. I believe he we'll will. We'll be right back with y'all, cause we're gonna funk ball. <laughs> what she said, <laughs> when we come back, what she said, peace. Hi, I'm Tim Garrison. Uh, you may know me as Timmy G. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's been two decades, but I want you to know I'm back in the Arglatex. And I've got a mix of music that can help you relax and chill out. It's smooth. It's relaxing. It's chill out jazz. The soulful mix of smooth jazz, soul, and smooth R&B. So join me every Wednesday night, 10 p.m. to midnight, on K-Ham Radio. Chill out jazz. Are you chilling? Welcome back to Just Saying with Teresa Foster and William Dexter Harris. Let me tell you something. I just love that little move there, is doing. <laughs> hey, we had our mayoral candidate run off. Let me just say this. Oh, yeah. Good it one, was surprising good to me to see somebody come out of nowhere and give Isla that much competition. He led. He, he, he ended up being the leader. He in the lead. So let me explain to all my viewers out there that's watching. December the 8th is important for you to vote. It's important for whoever you choose to vote for. Just get out and vote. If your candidate didn't make it, mine didn't, but it's all good. I think he's going to be back one day. Still, get out and vote. It's important that you voice your opinion so you won't be down the line complaining and griping. But this young man that came out of nowhere, almost like Barack Obama, and he has gays over the blues, so which is telling us in Shreveport, Louisiana, that we want to change, you know. We want to be at our home. We want to live here. We want to raise our families. We want to entertain here, but at the same time, we need someone that's going to lead Shreveport into the future that way. We 10 years behind already. I don't know, we might be 25 by now, how we acting. We need some entertainment here, so what did you think about that uh, sneak up? It shocked me, you know. it Actually, it didn't, but it did. I figured that, that, that the young man would be in the run. Are we talking about Adrian Perkins? You know, shout out to you, sir. Yeah, congratulations, you know I mean? Nolly Tom. Good, good, good luck to both of y'all. Uh, May the best woman a man win. But I thought, I, I, I never expected him to shoot out in front like he did. Because when the numbers first came in, he was like 70%. You know what I mean? He was killing them. But eventually over the over the period of them finishing the count, you know, she shook back in there, but he still ended up finishing ahead. I was shocked. I was shocked. Well, you shocked. know what? I'm going to tell you I something. I was shocked. He has a following, but my, my question is, he I'm hoping. He has that young generation. My yeah. question is, though, so I would love to sit down and ask him some questions because I want to know where have you been? What have you done? How do you know what Shreveport needs when you haven't lived here? How can you tell us about just because you went, you you was born and raised here? But I, I want some questions answered. We knew what Ollie was. We knew what she was running. What she was. He just popped up almost she like was, a she was Captain proud. Shreve uh, principal. Yeah, wow. Captain Shreve principal. She also went on to Washington to work. So my question is, um, where has he been? I think. I mean, people want to know that. Where have you been? What What do you actually know about Shreveport yourself? Not what people are telling you. Have you really got out and did the footwork? Do you really know what we need? Can you really give us the things we need? So, you know, it's it's a lot of questions I want to ask him. So I would love for him to come on to the show yeah, so we can I ask those he, questions so our been, viewers can know. We've been talking back and forth. Yeah. Me and him himself personally. 
me and his camp, you know, we've been talking back and forth, but we just hadn't came up with a, a, an agreement to actually get him here. But like I said, we got another month, you know, maybe we can go on and get him on to go on, him and his people are going to agree to come on the show, you know what I'm saying? But, <clears throat> but, 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 you know, we do, you know, I have a couple questions for you, young man. Yeah. You know, we what do, you, mean? you know. I mean, and, and, and it's not nothing like, you know, like I said, if you watch the show, you know, we're not here to disrespect nobody. We're not here to try to oh, make no. nobody look bad. We just want, but we yeah. do want the truth. And we owe our viewers that. You know, <laughs> you know we owe our viewers the truth. It, and I'm pretty it, sure those it. questions are on some of our viewers' mind Because it's a lot call of people back, that man. I know that voted for him. Back. You know, and they, you know, I'm pretty sure they got the question, where has he been? How do you know? That's for me. I want to know where you been, how you know what's been going on here. Personally, you know right. what I'm saying? Like I said, Stephen Jackson, shout out to you. Yes, sir. As a matter of fact, Thanks. thank you for telling us that you moved your uh, viewing party to R&R &R Crawfish. Wow. That's what it was. I text you. R&R &R Crawfish wow. on um, um, MLK. And I'm going to tell you, they got some good food. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, but yeah. man, you know. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> but yeah, but it's, it's uh, Shreveport needs a lot. And uh, the things we need, it's not always in a club. We need the nightlife, true that. But you got a lot of families here, a lot of single parents like myself, and I like to do a lot of things with my son. And he's too big for Chuck E. Cheese, and he done wore out altitude and air you. So what basically you have, skating ring, you know, bowling. It just needs to be something different, you know, a main event. Yeah. You know, let's bring it. Like I said, my whole thing is that, I'm, my whole thing is I'm, I'm just hoping that you know, these leaders, man, can get us a David Busters, man. I'm telling you, man, that will be huge for our area because that's a that's for kids and adults. Nothing like drinking you know and mean? playing with your kids. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you talking about some spending time with your kids, man. You can you can have family night in there every day. You know what I'm saying? Well, you at all man. I know? got off work and we in Oxford up in all day and buff. Man, David Busters, man. Oh, Jillian's, which is on almost about the same. It's nice, too. I know. Uh, it's, um... It's like three stories in Houston. It's got a it club, a bowling alley. It's nice. <laughs> it it's Jillian's, Buster, but David yeah. Buster's actually <laughs> bought it. Oh, so just no, right there. So it's nice. <laughs> what did you say? It's, it's three stories? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Man. Well, man, go ahead and take us out of here, man. We'll talk to him next week, man. Get tell him we'll see him next time. All right, man. I'm going <laughs> to take us out. For all you locals and all you around the world, this is <laughs> Teresa Foster and Willie Dexter Harris with Jess saying, Rock out with your caca. <laughs>